Hello, Sold viewers. Big Ronnie here with another installment of the Sold Stay at Home series where we bring you inside artists' studios and homes where we'll then see how they're working today and, you know, see what they're going through during this crazy corona time. Uh, if you'd like to support us, please come, uh, please take a look at our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash sold magazine. Uh, this is our 25th episode in the Sold Stay at Home series, and we're really happy about the momentum it's gaining and the people that want to be on. We're going to be bringing you guys some interesting names coming up. Today is Wednesday, May 6th, year of the quarantine 2020, and I couldn't be happier to be interviewing our following guest. Uh, I followed his work for a long time, and I can't wait to get into it with him. My dog, Size. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, yeah, well, welcome. Thanks for uh, having me on, Ronnie. And uh, yeah, nice to be on board. Nice to uh, yeah, chat to some faces. Thank you very much for being here. So where are you coming to us from? Uh, so I'm based in Portsmouth, which is on the south coast of the UK. So an hour south from London, but uh, somewhere that I can afford to live and by the sea. So yeah, yeah, the perfect spot. Now, is this your, I assume your home, is that also your, your studio or do you have, normally have a separate space? No, I've got a separate space for a studio. Um, it, it got to a point a few years ago where I was taking over the house too much. And so uh, it, was, it was time to move out. So I got that. But uh, what I don't have is Wi-Fi in the studio. Um, purely in order to try and be a little bit more productive, um, we can all get lost in that rabbit hole of what is the, the Internet. So, uh, uh, so I'm at home today. Um, I can get to my studio and back during lockdown, which is a which is a bonus because it's just around the corner. But uh, uh, no, I'm uh, in, in the comfort of my own home today. Now, we at Sold Magazine had covered you a couple of times. We did a uh, 2018 Free Art Friday article that referenced a lot of the work that you did previously. And there was also the 2019 article um, about your work. What, what can you catch uh, our, our readers up with uh, since then? What, you know, what, what are the big projects coming out of my dog size right now? Uh, well, I've been hitting the mural scene and the, I suppose the exhibition scene fairly hard for the last few years free art friday still going piece still goes out every friday in fact i've upped it during lockdown so i'm doing a piece a day for 50 days um what happens after 50 days because i'm sure we're probably still in lockdown i don't know but um yeah that's carrying on um yeah yeah the mural scene wherever it happens to be hitting up walls um finding nice spots uh and then busying away in the studio when it's downtime building up bodies of work and showing um, it's kind of changed a bit now, now right? And I'm sure we'll, we'll get onto that. But um, it's uh, like many people, I had a year, my year planned out, everything sorted, knew exactly what was going on. Um, I had a bit of a swerve plan for the year. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm now, or do they say, I'm now pivoting. So I'm now looking at what was happening, where I was, and uh, where I'm going to be moving from there. Well, it's, it sounds like you're, you're optimistic enough that when, when a pivot like this happens or something that causes you to, to throw all your plans out the window, uh, are you the type of person that gets bummed out by that or do you, you get re-energized by, you know, the, 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 the changing of the course, so to speak? Uh, chat to me maybe two weeks ago and um, yeah, I was carrying a big cloud. We got to a point where uh, the project that I was um, was planning to put on had uh, raised the funding of nearly a quarter of a million pounds. The 3,000 square meter building that we were taking over was all in place. Everything was everything was ready to rumble. And then in one week, the whole lot went. So um, yeah, I carried a crowd for a bit. But um, you know, as, as artists, you have to respond. And my only way of dealing with any situation is to is to paint and whether that's going to find a few quiet spots, which is what I did to start with and just kind of, you know, switch off and concentrating on the paint and then a couple of paintings down, get back into the studio again and um, just reassess what's going on and, and try and move forward from there. I, I, you know, we, we as artists are, I think our role is to kind of respond to the life we have around us and to respond what we see and experience. And, um, I think I would I would have felt like I was missing something if I didn't um, find some way to respond to the situation that I was going through and the people around me are. But I, I think you're the innovator that creates when you necessarily don't have to. I don't necessarily mean the artist in you. I mean the uh, you know the community activist. You don't have to give your work away. You don't have to give fifty days, fifty pieces. That's not even for the. Uh, that's not even. I don't even think that's for the fans. 
that follow you and get the pieces. I'll bet you that's cathartic and, and therapeutic just for you to get that out there. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's about, yeah, being busy about producing work and knowing that uh, I've got that out of my system. And then once you got out of your system, what do you do with it? Well, you know, I can put stuff in galleries, but I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I've got enough um, ideas and uh, I'm quick working that I can actually cover lots of those bases. So it, it is, it's cathartic to me to sit down, stick some music on really loud and get lost in what I'm doing for a week and know that at the end of that, you know, I've got the buzz of being able to take it out and drop it as free art or, or, or run some community projects based on that. So, um, yeah, it's good. And what's, what's nice, I think, is the community around is, is, is recognizing the importance. You know, we, the, the times that we're all locked in the house, what, what are we doing with that time? We're, 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 we're listening to music, we're watching films, TV, we're looking at the art on our walls. It's, it's that creativity that's sustaining us in our time, right? We're, we're all turned into these wonderful chefs, you know, we're all cooking these super cool meals and you know, we're spending time on, you know, cooking dinner, right? Everybody suddenly turned into a TV chef because they've got the time to do that and, and share that time. And I think it's, uh, you, know, you know, creativity is so important. I think more and more people are becoming aware of how valuable that can be. And um, yeah, our job is to, to plug that gap and give people, give people that, um, that creative thing that they want. Now, you mentioned music a couple of times. You know, uh, music's the soundtrack of our lives, as everybody knows. Uh, you know, my, my listening tastes evolve and I always love new music and I love hearing a new band or a new singer or things like that. But what about your soundtrack? Is this, uh, is this the time to change it up for you? Are you listening to the same stuff you, you were raised on? Um, uh, yeah, a bit of both. I kind of get stuck into, you know, do we all get stuck into that music that we listen to somewhere between, you know, 18 and 25? I don't know. <laughs> That's a big soundtrack to my life. But uh, I've also got teenage kids who are coming home with their music tastes and starting to develop those. And it's quite nice to come in and sort of cherry pick the things that uh, they're listening to and introduce them to some old stuff as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, music plays an important part of of, of my creative practice. Is you know, my the record player is the first thing to go on in the studio when I arrive. Last thing to get switched off. Uh, if any of you have seen any of my kind of every man character with the text that goes along with it, pretty much all of that comes from lyrics that I'm picking up. Every title of every piece I've ever painted that's exhibited um, is a lyric somewhere that I picked up. So I've got a you know a table full of uh, lyrics that as I, I'm listening, I'll you know I might know the song, I might not, but you know if there's something that catches my attention, that gets written down and uh, and that becomes um, an element of what I'm doing with, with the piece for sure. So how are people in Portsmouth uh, taking to the lockdown? Over here, it's, it's, it's hit or miss. You know, some places you go, it's deserted. Some places you go and you're like, oh my God, why are there so many people here? Yeah, it, it, it's the same here. We got a really nice uh, seafront and uh, initially everybody was was kind of heading there. The weather's been really good over in the UK, kind of uh, unexpectedly so for this time of year. Um, and so the idea of, of lockdown is, is tricky. I think uh, on the whole, people are fairly respectful. What I really like is now walking down the street when you've got to do that social distance thing. You know, initially nobody was making eye contact. Now people were looking and smiling, right? You know, they're, they're respectfully stepping out between the cars so somebody can walk past um, if, if they're not able to do that. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I think it's, as much as it's really tough, it, it's bringing out some of the best in people as well, I think. It, I don't want to say that it's the same, but it, it's, it's eerily similar to New York after 9-11, where everybody okay. was much, much more friendly. Everybody was happier. Everybody got along for a little bit of time. You know, it's uh, just the mood changes a little bit during these common things that everybody's going through. Yeah. And, and, did that, and did that last? Was there a legacy from that, do you feel? Or do you think it dwindled away over time? Of course it dwindled away after, you know, 20 years, but it was definitely present for a good amount of time after. Yeah. I, you know, I'm Skyping my parents every day, you know, and I didn't do that in the past. And I'm kind of hoping that the legacy of these, these positive things is something that we can, can, we can continue and we can, we, can keep, we can keep buzzing off and keep those positive things going. Well, you know, I love all the artists, yourself included, that are including the face masks in their work. I just feel like if you have a character, why shouldn't the character or the, you know, be suffering the same plight as everybody else right now? I think that's a great way to, um, to, to uh, memorialize the time, so to speak. You know, we're not really celebrating it, but we do have to remember that we went through this and the creativity that comes out of it. So are you, are you looking to do more of that for your characters? 
Um, I, I hit some walls fairly hard at the beginning and they had those characters on there and I did uh, some can releases that used them. Uh, there was, uh, I don't know if you know Doug Gillen who runs Fifth Wall TV, he did a little feature going, what is it, why is everybody doing the face masks? And you know, the kind of, one, one of the cheeky answers is because we don't have to paint a nose and a mouth if we paint a face mask. So <laughs> it's, it's much, much quicker. You can get, get peace time so much quicker if you've got a face mask on it rather than a, than a nose and a mouth. But I think like, like you said, it, it, it's it's one very unique thing that we're becoming aware of and, and that captures what's happening on there. Um, do, I, I, do I think I'm going to run with it? I don't know. I think I've got it out of my system with one really good wall with lots of pieces on there. Um, never say never, but um, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of almost moving on to that idea that we now need to think about what's happening uh together as a community how are we going to do this so you know the mask very much uh represents um the idea that which we're trying to keep safe right the idea of kind of you know i'm keeping you safe you can keep me safe there's the worry i've got to put a mask on because i'm afraid of what's happening uh i'm now you know as we're working our way through it now now i'm thinking about how can i tell those people that are out and about or that maybe aren't out and about that are looking on their screens that um we're doing this together so i don't know uh the, the in the last week we i uh, i had the opportunity to take part of a project um called the covid19 arts billboard now as a street artist i've you know forever fought against um advertising in the streets right you know just they do nothing other than make you feel that you're not worthy you know unless you buy the shit that they're selling and street art for, for me has always been an antidote for that um, but what we're finding now with, 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 with the lockdown is that nobody's paying for advertising. So these billboards are just sat empty. Um, and uh, one bright soul within the city came up with a plan, uh, contacted the billboard people and said, right, you know, they're doing nothing. Can we do something? And, you know, to give the billboard guys their dues, um, they've offered up the boards for free. Um, we had to cover some costs in, in getting them printed. But um, a whole bunch of local artists have been producing um, kind of nice positive message art uh, and uh, they went up um, y yeah, yesterday um, on the streets and yeah yeah it's, it's nice it's nice to see a, a huge piece that I haven't had to toil over on a ladder or a scissor lift I just had to press print you know and uh, and then and someone fitted these into place but uh, yeah it was good to see art taking over billboards as opposed to advertising that's do you think you're going to dabble more in the digital space, considering you know the once the work is created, the time to production is much quicker than brush painting or or spray painting? Yeah, I I am, um, I I'm very analog in my approach to pretty much anything. I had a a deadline for the for the billboard, and they said right, okay. Uh, and I'd missed the deadline because I'd missed the email and they were like, we need it tomorrow. And I was like, that's fine. But I've got to go and paint it in the studio. I'll have a wet canvas ready for you by tomorrow lunchtime. And like, no, no, we need a digital image. And it was just like, <laughs> no, that's, you know, that's not me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I have, don't have Photoshop. I don't, don't have Illustrator. I don't do any of that stuff. If, if you want something done, I'm going to get a piece of paper. Or I'm going to get a canvas and I'm going to splash and paint. And uh, it was kind of nice seeing because a lot of my every man is done with my fingers, sort of finger painting. And uh, when you see on the billboard, you can actually see my uh, fingerprint in eight foot <laughs> diameter oh, where it's cool. kind of swirled around inside the paint, which which is you can't do when you're working um, digitally. So um, the answer to your question is probably not, not because I don't want to, just because the way that I work is is spray paint and wet paint and brushes and um it's it's quicker for me to work that way than it is to work digitally i'm sure for other people it's it's a proper twist the other way around but um yeah no, no not for me how about any other skills or any new mediums that you're working on during lockdown ah uh, well okay well yeah there, there's the whole meme thing right at the beginning if you don't leave this with a new skill so um uh i've been a painter and i can draw and uh, uh, you know i do that till the cows come home but uh, what I haven't done is sculpt, so um, so I'm moving into sculpture. Um, so the project that got pulled um, is I've and my my pivot point is um, okay. If I can't get the public into the space, I still got the space, three thousand square meter casino that was shut down in the 1970s, and no one's ever been inside. It's just the most incredible, incredible space, right in the, in the heart of my city. I didn't even know it was there, and I've been here for 20 years. So wow. I've got. I've got this building, so uh, the plan is to um, 
to create an installation in the space that nobody ever visits. <laughs> so a, 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 compl a complete ghost exhibition. That would be, well, at least put it online, take some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to wait to see what, what, what comes of it. But, but, but the opportunity for me to, 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 to use a space means that I've, I've got wall space, but I've also got volume, I've got a, a huge space. So um, yeah, I've been, I've been, been dabbling with, with sculpture. And it's, it's, it's like, um, like trying to write with, your, with the wrong hand. I'm left-handed, so it's like trying to pick up a pen with the right hand. I know what I want it to do, but um, at the moment, I still haven't got any muscle memory to, to make it happen. So there's lots of investigations. There's lots of things kind of thrown across the room and left in a pile on the, once it's hit the wall and falls down. But um, yeah, that's, that's where I am. I'm hitting a new skill. I'm, I'm, uh, so after, after, this is the first time we're meeting, but I, I get the feeling from you that you're, you know, the, the no Wi-Fi in the studio and discipline at home. I, I feel like, you know, the discipline and being locked indoors to create is not a chore for you at all. I think for many artists, um, you know, social isolation is, 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 is pretty, a pretty constant thing. It's, it's something that, that, that many artists are used to. Um, I think in the street art scene, you kind of, you jump, between the mural side, which is incredibly social and the opportunity to travel and, you know, working in spaces with lots of other people. Um, and then you've got your studio practice um, when, you're, when you're down and locked away. If you're, if you're heavily weighted on the mural scene, like I know a lot of my contemporaries are, um, you know, I really feel for them, shit's hit the fan and um, they're, they're thinking, but um, I'm hoping that they can use that time valuably. I know when I talk to a lot of mural painters, they're like, yeah, I haven't got time to be in the studio. I'm jumping on a plane flying here and I'm painting a wall here. Um, and I'm hoping that they're gonna see this as a positive opportunity to, to hit it. But um, uh, yeah, I've got a family, so I don't get to travel quite as much as some of those guys, which means that, um, yeah, my studio practice is something that I'm fairly um, locked down on when I'm in there. I know what I'm doing, I'm cracking on, I get the hours get the hours done and I'm fairly productive in, in, in what I do. Now, uh, the, the, also the way you're speaking, it sounds like you, you were always an artist, born an artist, but it doesn't sound like you were trained it. Were you, were you professional before you dedicated yourself? No, so I spent 20 years as a, uh, kin uh, I suppose the equivalent would be a kindergarten teacher, so primary school teacher. Um, I, I was always a creative kid, you know, a pack of felt-tip pens was the number one present in my Christmas stocking when I was a kid. And then, you know, the 80s, I was painting everyone's leather jackets. In the 90s, I was painting the rave backdrops. Um, but, you know, quite rightly, my dad was like, well, you've got to get a proper job, you know. Uh, art's great and it's a lovely hobby, but you're never going to earn from it. Go and get a proper job. So I trained as a teacher and then taught for, for 20 years. So my I was kind of running the street art thing parallel with um, putting a suit in tie on and, and going to work during the, the day and then in the evenings and weekends hitting the hitting the streets and, and that's where the free art friday came from because you know i wasn't in a position that i could get arrested because if i got arrested i'd lose my job um so free art friday was a kind of fluffy way to step into what was happening in the street art scene the exciting thing um but not do something which was um uh, i could get arrested for and, and lose my job for but um yeah i've been painting full time for seven years now so i stepped out of teaching seven years ago when things really kind of kicked up for me um and haven't looked back but um yeah no uh, other than mucking around doing my own thing i've got no sort of formal arts training now you mentioned hopes what, what are your hopes for the the street art scene either globally or the cities that are the hottest right now in terms of uh, the amount of galleries and shows and things like that what do you think that we can do as a, as a scene to change things and make it a little safer out there <sighs> to make it safer out there i don't know i, I just think in, in in troubled times you often get the very best art you you know you you get the excitement within a city sometimes there's a little bit more freedom when you know when things collapse there's freedom for the street artists to go out there and start to reclaim those streets in a, in a really um, sort of uh, communal and, and, and social um, intervention. Um, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that these difficult times are gonna lead people to react creatively. Um, you know, the 
political art is a really valuable way to show what's what's happening in the world you look at what's happening with um you know some cities look what happened in kind of athens a few years ago with the financial crash and you know really really exciting graffiti scene and street art scene grew up over there um so i hope it will spur people on into using art as a, as a sort of tool for social change um what happens to the gallery scene I don't know. Everybody has to look at what the, uh, how life was before uh, and think about how they can make it change. And I think some people that's going to be too much for, and I think some people are going to use the opportunity and embrace it. And I think hopefully um, it will move forward to, to create some exciting new things. Well, they are. I have no idea. I've just got to focus on how I can move forwards and, and take it as it is. I had the strangest experience this week. So, um, I, a couple of people suggested me do make a jigsaw, make a jigsaw. And I'm like, right, jigsaws, man. What do we do with a jigsaw? But um, all right, okay. There's a couple of fans in the group that wanted some jigsaws. So I'll, I'll knock up. You know, I'll do get 20 printed, and then um, I'll, you know, they'll mm -hmm. keep everyone happy. And then uh, somebody suggested to me, why don't you just do like an open edition, 48 hours, however many people want them, you can get them printed. Done. I sold a thousand in 24 hours. Oh my god. It's, it's gone crazy. So well, we've, I've just worked out that the volume of all these jigsaws in one room is bigger than my apartment from floor yeah. to ceiling. <laughs> Wait, so it's just like, it, it's something that I would never, ever consider doing. Jigsaw, that's the strangest thing. But equally, it's cheaper than a print. You can have fun making it. Once it's done, you stick it to a board and you hang it on your wall and you've got a piece of work. For me, it's just an interesting medium. So I was able to hide little messages inside. So when they're broken up into pieces, I know people are really fo be focusing on super tiny elements of my work that they would never do. You know, they're never gonna spend five hours staring at a wall. Somebody might spend an hour looking really carefully, but with a jigsaw, man, they're diving so far into every element of that piece. So it's, it's, the, stra <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the weirdest thing. But it is, I think it's a really good example of how, as artists, we've got, to, we've got to pivot. We've got to think about how people view art and culture and experience that and, and hopefully be in the right place to make that happen. I think it's brilliant, uh, a, a time-consuming task related to art rather than a print just to be stuck in a drawer or a folio or hung on a wall, you know, where you actually have to sit and focus on it when people have all the time in the world. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, but you know, <laughs> and you know, up until that point, I'm thinking, right? Yeah, my 70 year old mother loves to sit down and do a jigsaw, but actually, you know, it doesn't just have to be those people, right? And the fact that so many people jumped on it means that um, they must be thinking the same thing. That's a great idea. What about um, what about any other ideas or or things you're considering trying in this time that might only work now? <sighs> I don't know. It's, I think it's one of those things. Uh, there's a famous Picasso quote right inspiration exists but it has to find you working so i think what's important for me is that i get into the studio and i start mucking around on something and that something will lead to something else and then we'll move forward from there so the the, the casino project there are some things that i can't release too much in the information but what? um yeah that it's it's um there are going to be some things within the casino project but um i think hopefully people will just go oh shit why didn't i think of that um, i'm hoping but uh, yeah, I've got to keep it, some things under wraps for now. Well, we, we, we definitely love to cover that when it's time for uh, unveiling or a piece or your mm. puzzle or whatever you want to do with it. We'd love to help you cover it for sure. Nice one, um, all right, let's talk, about, let's talk about food while you're at home. You said everybody's turning into a, a TV celebrity chef. <laughs> what are you guys cooking at home and what do the kids love it when you cook? Right. Um, it's, it's hard to get any food deliveries here. So we have switched from the whole supermarket thing and are using local providers. So lots of the cafes and restaurants within the city have shut down. Some are providing kind of standard food delivery that you get at the restaurant, but some are providing uh, really good veg boxes, meat deliveries, um, really good food that you can source really well. So we're jumping in on that as much as we possibly can. And, um, um, yeah, the the kids are older teenage kids, so we're, they're in on they get a day a week that they're having to cook something as well. So, um, yeah, anything as long as it uses really good ingredients um, and uh, keeping it as fresh as we can. So, I think there's some really good burgers on the plan tonight. I think my uh, eldest son is cooking burgers tonight, but uh, he's going full out. He's got the bacon and the 
pickles and the and the, the artisan bread and yeah he's, he's going going hell for leather for it tonight it should be good uh what's the address and what time should i be there please <laughs> yeah welcome anytime doors open just socially distanced right you gonna wear a mask the whole time you're there uh, I'll be honest, uh, you know, so much of the scene and so much of art is communication about it and sh and sharing it together. And I think this time is really hitting uh, the street art scene as hard as just about any other industry right now. And I wouldn't expect it to be any better, but at least this is a, a creative time and, and the artists and the creators are really going to get us through it. Yeah, 100%. They really are. And I, I, you know, I hope they've got through the black cloud and I hope they can um, find a way of, of, of getting what's inside them out there, whether it, whether that's a positive or a negative, whether that's something that's kind of fluffy or whether that's something that's, that's really heavy. But I think um, they're, they're really, really important. I think, you know, artists really will really help rec record and be a voice for the emotion of, of the people. All right, silly question to end up on. The director just called him, and we're going to make a my dog size life story. What actor plays you? <laughs> um, oh shit, I don't know any actors. Um, uh, Mac Mackenzie Crook, right? He was one of the pirates in Pirates of the Caribbean. He's an English actor. Uh, there's a program in the UK called The Detectorists. Um, I, I've been told I look a little bit like him. He's he's a freaky fucker, but um, he's a great actor. So yeah, I'll, I'll I'll jump on him. He can play me. It's not very uh, handsome, but there we go. Do you have any tips? Uh, TV shows, movies, anything you good you watch lately to tell our viewers to watch? I'm not much of a watcher. No, I've got some tips. Right, I've got three tips. Three tips. Three tips in life. Okay, oh. I follow these. These these are these are my rules in life. One, work hard. Two, be nice. Three, there are no excuses. That's it. Well, I don't know a better way to end this conversation. My dog size, thank you very much for your time today. That was great. I love learning a little bit about what makes you tick over there. And I love hearing about uh, the scene from overseas. Uh, but before I let you go, please let our viewers know where they can find you online to take a look at your work and okay. maybe, grab, maybe grab a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> the, the jigsaw buzzers are gone. I can't, I can't sell any more than that. Uh, you can find me on all the social media platforms. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the same. I've got a really strange name, so it's really easy to find. I'm just my dog size. Not signs, not eyes. Okay, my dog size. Uh, and then the website is mydogsize.co.uk. Nice and straightforward. Well, we are sold out with my dog size. Thank you for your time today. Thanks very much, Sold Out. It was really good to speak to you. Cheers.